I'm Johnny Price in Greenville, South Carolina, and this is another of our Talking Head Film Analyses, where we are not so much concerned with how good a movie might be as we are with the ideas that come out of the movie. A separation holds a highly significant place of accomplishment in Iran. Given the fact that it is the first best foreign film Oscar winner to ever come out of that country, and it has generated more revenue than any other film to ever come out of that country. At this recording, $10 million plus in international sales. But it is also quite the political volleyball. It seems that the Iranian Ministry of Culture and Islamic Guidance placed a ban on a separation while it was still in production. Because it seems that the director, Asghar Farhadi, at the 2010 Iran Cinema Celebration, criticized the Iranian cultural policy of singling out and censoring its most prominent filmmakers. So they just shut the film down. Well, of course, the film's production license was reinstated and obviously the film has been made. But this week, this past Monday, now this would be March the 12th, 2012, Iranian authorities forced the cancellation of a celebration to honor the director, and no reasons were given. But the film has come under fire. Uh, for example, on a recent television show, a film critic, Masad Farisati, called for Hadi a cheeky director, and said that a separation depicts, quote, the dirty picture of the Iranian people that Westerners are looking for, unquote. In the meantime, Farhadi has no immediate plans to return to his country and says that he will make his next film in France. <laughs> Do you think? Well, to the story. In Tehran, Seaman wants a divorce from her husband, Nader, because she wants to live abroad and provide a better life for their 11-year-old daughter. Nader, however, wants to stay and care for his father, who is suffering in the advanced stages of Alzheimer's disease. So Seaman moves out, moves in with her mother, and Nader is forced to hire a pregnant lady who already has a small child to care for his father while he is at work during the day. Now one day Nader returns home and this lady Razia isn't there, and he finds his father having fallen out of a chair. One of his arms has been tied to one of the arms of the chair, and he almost dies. Razia has left for some initially inexplicable reason. And when she returns, she encounters, of course, an enraged Nader, who pushes her out the door, and she falls on the steps. Razia miscarries. She says, as a result of the fall. And she then goes to court with her husband to sue for the death of their child. And that's just the backdrop of the story that is a separation. 
In his production notes, uh, director for Hadi says, I think a separation is a detective story without any detectives. The audience is the one in charge of solving the puzzles. There will be as many answers as audiences. The film raises questions instead of imposing ideas and answers. Everyone will focus on the most relevant point according to his own character and emotions. To a great extent, of course, it doesn't really matter that this is an Iranian film because it is a universally realistic film because all of the characters are flawed, just as everyone who makes up humankind is flawed. It seems that whenever people are opposed to each other, uh, each side and each player is flawed, imperfect, often blinded if not crippled by their own prejudices and motivations. But since this is an Iranian film, we do get a couple of glimpses into the Muslim world. In one instance, when the elderly gentleman, the Alzheimer's patient, soils himself, Razia must call an Islamic law hotline to see if it is permissible for her to clean him. In another instance, Razia is asked to swear on the Quran that she is certain that a particular event took place. Well, she is not certain, and she is afraid to swear that she is on the Quran, for fear that something might happen to her young daughter. Exposing Allah as a God who would break the legs of a child whose parent sins. Certainly not the God of the Old and New Testament, for those of you who continue to insist that all three faiths worship the same God. And finally, my apologies for each and every mispronounced name. I'm Johnny Price. This has been another of our Talking Head Film Analyses.